All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a commercial pilot oral exam. Obviously, this is the short version. The full length version is on the website at flyatmikeelf.com with the link in the description below. You can click on that. Oh, there's a lot of other full length oral videos on that site as well, plus the commercial pilot boot camp that's guaranteed to help you to pass your check ride when you complete that course. Anyways, I'm done talking. Let's go intro. All right, Eli, how's it going? I'm John. Eli. Gonna be your uh, DPE today. We're gonna be going over uh, commercial oral, and then, of course, if everything goes well here, we'll hop on the airplane and go fly together. Uh, already looked through your logbook. That all looks good to me. We've got IACR completed. Yep. A little bit about the oral exam. Obviously, I've already been through uh, one of these before, but the idea here is it's open book. Uh, it's not necessarily any right or wrong answer, but we're looking for the best answer possible. If you don't know something, just say so uh rather than just making something up if you try to make something up uh, i probably will know uh so try not to do that all right and uh basically at the end of the day there's three outcomes right so there's going to be pass uh not pass or discontinuance and that's uh something a little option that you or i could exercise at any point uh, I could say, hey, you know, the weather's not good. I could say, hey, I don't feel well. You could say the same thing. Any point during the oral or during the flight, at any time today, for any reason, no questions asked, you can discontinue. We'll come back, we'll resume uh, where we left off, no penalty, and it doesn't cost you anything extra uh, to pick back up where we left off. So if at any point today you want to just stop where we are, then by all means, uh, utilize that option. It's definitely a good option for you to have. So uh, you ready to begin? Yeah, ready to go. Awesome. Then starting off here, so you want to be a commercial pilot. Yep. Let's say uh, you got a Piper Warrior is what you brought for the test today. Yeah. So let's say you got that uh, Piper Warrior. You become a commercial pilot today, and you happen to not fly for like 18 months. Uh, just life getting work gets in the way. Mm -hmm. So uh, could you go ahead and just go back out to the airplane, go fly after 18 months, or is there anything you have to do before you could go fly? Or no, I'd need to go and uh, get three takeoffs and landings. To be current again in the airplane in 18 months is uh, pushing two years but not quite at two years for the flight review okay um, I'd probably go want to go up with an instructor and get get sure. current again with that instructor so like you said you know if you want to um, go uh, get current so to speak on um, three takeoffs and landings you can go do that by yourself and then that gives you the privilege to do what after that point after I, uh, three takeoffs and landings during the day, then I can go up and start flying again. Okay. At that uh, point. You could, okay, so let's say you want to fly with uh, your girlfriend uh, down to Key West, um, and you haven't flown in 18 months. So you go do your three takeoffs and landings, and you're going to get to Key West. Let's say the sun sets about 7 p.m., you're going to get there about 7.45. Could you do that if you had done the three takeoffs and landings? No, I'd have to go get current at night at that point, which would be three takeoffs and landings. Okay, um, so three in takeoffs and landings, and are those touch and goes? Or are they at night? They have to be full stop. Landings. Full stop. Okay. Yeah. And at what time of day or night can you do those? Um, how long after sunset or before sunrise would you have to do those? It's the end of civil twilight. It becomes uh, nighttime. Okay, so you could uh, you could log night flight time after civil twilight. Mm -hmm. What about to do those night takeoffs and landings to a full stop? You're gonna do them after civil twilight or? I do them one hour after sunset. Okay, one hour after sunset, we could yeah. do them. And then yeah, like, we could log night flight time uh, from the end of civil twilight. End of civil twilight. Sure, yeah. so if sunset's at like 7 p.m., when civil twilight usually? I'm not sure exactly when civil twilight is. Okay, what could I you know. use to check it? I could probably look in the far end and yeah, there might be a definition there, yeah. or um, for the local area, maybe you know, Google yeah. might know. Or I might call a local flight instructor and see what he thought it okay. might be. But yeah, at yeah. the commercial level, we're looking yeah. for you to... Yeah, I'd, pro I'd probably go in the far end. That'd be my first, okay. first choice. Sure. Can you find anything about Civil Twilight in the far end? I probably could. It might take sure. a second. Go ahead and yeah, see if you can uh, find them in there for me. All right, I have the definition of civil twilight. Sure. Civil twilight is defined to begin in the morning and to end in the evening when the center of the sun is geometrically six degrees below the horizon. 
Okay, so it's an awesome definition, but um, like I said, if sunset's like 7 p.m. tonight, uh, where could we look to find what time civil twilight would be? Probably wouldn't be in a book because it obviously probably changes yeah. day to day. Yeah, every so, day. So you yeah. might look in your local weather or go on Google. Sure. Or, yeah, there you yeah. go. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, so we could find Silver Twilight then. That way we can know we'll when go, we can legally yeah, log night flight time. Uh, sure. Google, yeah. yeah that sounds better. Yeah, sounds good to me. All right. Um, yeah, it's not like the Harry Potter books that you open and you yeah, know, the words somewhere. move around the yeah, pages. Because yeah, because the time's always changing every sure. day. Exactly. exactly. So, uh, anyways, just to rewind a uh, few steps here too when uh if you had just done the three touch and goes say at noon you know when it was nice and sunny out and you wanted to go fly uh with your girlfriend down to key west and you're gonna land you knew you're gonna land about you know 35 40 minutes past sunset mm -hmm. um is that legal if you had only done the three touch and goes i wouldn't want to do that okay you would want to do yeah, that. that's I a really good answer that. yeah okay but um do you, is it legal it, de it would depend on when Civil Twilight actually begins. Okay. Would it depend on Civil Twilight, or are you just good to, um, if you've only done your three takeoffs and landings in the past nine days, you might just be good to fly with passengers up to the point of sunset in 59 minutes thereafter? Yeah, that's probably... That's, that's probably, probably what, what it is. What is that sounds more accurate. accurate. The okay, answer cool. Is, yeah. That sounds good to me, then. Um, anyways, what are you going to have on board that aircraft when you go do that flight with you as far as your paperwork so not the paperwork for the airplane but what are you going to have well i'm going to have my commercial certificate with me okay um which for that flight i wouldn't need since she's going to be paying me she's not going to be paying me okay know? so it's just going to be her and i going up in the airplane i just sure. really need my private but you know i'd probably have my commercial mm -hmm. after it. today your your private will get replaced with your with commercial. commercial yeah you will no yeah. longer be a private pilot you'll be yeah. a all you'll have is a commercial, is a commercial pilot. Sure. All yeah. right. So yeah. So I'll have uh, my my uh, flying certificate with me, and then I'll have a government issued ID, picture ID, and my medical. Okay. Cool. And what kind of medical would you need for that flight? Uh, for that flight, I just need a third class medical. Okay. Sure. So no need to have a second class or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. Need okay. one. Cool. Uh, now it's been eighteen months. Is that third class medical still good? Been eight, it depends on when it was issued. Okay, so let's say it was issued 18 months ago. Is it still valid? Yeah. Okay, how about if it was issued 36 months ago? Um, 36 months ago, yes, it would still be good. Okay, how long are they good for? They're good for 60 months for me because I'm under uh, 40 years old. Awesome, very good. Cool, so uh, like you had mentioned, you know, she's not going to be paying you. What if she was like, hey, you know, Han, like, you know, you can barely uh, put gas in your car after all the other expenses from flight training. So here, let me give you some gas money. And the total cost for that flight, say it's 500 bucks, and uh, she gives you 200 and, you know, 275 bucks. Is that okay, or? Uh, 275, I believe it's okay, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so. I probably wouldn't take just, money for her, from her, since it would be kind of my own money that I'm Sure, right. Um, but let, so to keep the math simple, so she's giving you a little more than half yeah, of the cost little, of the flight. I, I'd want so, to keep it right at half. Okay, yeah, so the pro rata share still applies. Yeah. Um, when could you charge her for, you know, when could you charge her, you know, a thousand bucks to take her down there? I mean, that's a pretty cool uh, flight. Yeah. You know, if you want to make some money, you're a commercial pilot, when, could you, how could you do that? You own this Piper Warrior. Yeah. As, so. as, long as, as long as it's just like word of mouth be, between friends, I could I could take her down there. Okay, you might be able to, um, yeah, do something. That would like, be more along the lines of private carriage. Okay, so you could get away yeah. with private carriage, and um, you might run that by FISDO or something like that. You know, if you're going to have like a contract yeah, with her, exactly. you know, a private contract, that would work. Um, what about, could you put a sign on the side of the road that said, you know, Eli's no, Charters? No, I couldn't um, do that, definitely. So even though you're a commercial that. pilot, you can't. Do yeah, it. I can't. I can't do that because that'd be a, a common carriage where you're actually advertising for this, you know, for this flight. Okay. So we're, I'm not able to do that. Okay. Cool. That sounds good. Um, how about? Let's see here. If uh, uh, let's say you got all your documents on board there, what uh, before you go fly, you'd want to make sure the airplane's actually airworthy. 
So what would you check in the way of documents to make sure the aircraft itself is airworthy? Well, first I'd look at their airworthiness certificate, make sure that that was on board and that we had that, and check all of our required docu documents, which is aero, airworthiness, registration, the pilot operating handbook, and uh, weight and balance. Okay. Make sure all that was good, and I'd look in the logbook, make sure that the aircraft depends on what it's certified under, but I'd make sure that the aircraft was uh, had its annual inspection done. Okay, very good. Um, so it has the annual done, um, and like you said, you own this one, so you don't have to have a 100 hour on it. What other yeah. things would be in there besides the annual? What kind of inspections? Um, well, you'd, you'd definitely have the annual, make sure that the oil was changed, and um, just make sure it's had all of its inspections. Okay, um, what are those required inspections? The required inspections, depending on what kind of flight uh, you're flying, it really, it really just as an annual is a big one. Okay, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. annual is definitely yeah. a big one. Once yeah. a year, in fact, yeah, I believe exactly. it happens. Um, what other things besides the annual would you have checked on the airplane? On the, you need a static check uh, for the year altimeter every that's every two years if i'm not mistaken okay so they might check like the altimeter um mm -hmm. what other things would they check uh your transponder transponder you okay check your train how often is that one I believe that one's uh every two years okay but yeah. i'm not sure yeah every uh every yeah 24 calendar months sounds right to me yeah um okay where could you check if you weren't sure like you said where could you check that i go on the faa maybe call the local fisdo something yeah something those would all those work lines. Yeah, um, might be able to find it in the far aim, yeah. something like that. Um, what section do you think that would be in, in the far aim? Do you think it would be in 43, 91, 43, or which is 61? Aircraft yeah, maintenance. most of the maintenance stuff is in there. Um, I think if you looked at 91, 413, you might find. 91, uh, 413, that's, yeah. the, that's the one. You might find that the transponder needs to be inspected every 24 calendar months. What other things on that airplane have to be inspected? Uh, transponder altimeter I'm not sure okay uh, anything like let's say everything goes terribly wrong today and you crash the airplane would there be any sort of um, any sort of devices that would help people find you yeah an ELT that an ELT say, yeah you want okay. to check you want to be checking the ELT okay and we have to check the ELT how often yeah. do we have to check that um, or have that checked I would I would say every year but uh, okay I'm not Sure. I'm not sure on that one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and once again, where can we find information like that? Yeah, we can find that in the far end. Okay. So, uh, yeah, if you looked in part 91, you might... 91, that's where it yep. would be. Uh, so, 91.207, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, hmm. And we have to do it every 12 months. Now, what about the batteries in it? Because it's battery powered. So, hmm. how often do the batteries have to be replaced? Anytime they reach 50% of their life. Uh, they have to be the ELT has to be replaced the batteries have to be replaced okay. or if it's in use for more than one cumulative hour okay cool like maybe you just want to turn it on and listen to the yeah. siren blare because yeah. it helps nice. lull you yeah. to sleep yeah. yeah yeah so you let it run for an hour you got to replace those batteries okay um, probably wouldn't want to do that yeah, um, <laughs> you mentioned airworthiness directives or I think you did uh, but anyways what is an airworthiness directive an AD is something that's a mandatory compliance depending you'd have to look up the airworthiness directive which you could in, in the FAA's website okay you'd look it up but most most of them are mandatory unless they have some sort of ex exception in there but yeah yeah you, you want to look at an AD and it's mandatory compliance with the aircraft sure so what would they issue an ad for what, um possibly well just over in riddle and daytona beach they lost uh, a wing so that's a possibility that they're going to come out they'll come out with a service bulletin and then it might turn into an airworthiness okay. directive where you have to actually inspect that wing spar okay. on that aircraft which, so some sort of new inspection yeah, or something like that yeah or a replacement something okay like yeah replacement part ones. cool yeah. So um, if I wanted to search ADs for this Piper Warrior, uh, you mentioned you could go on the FA website. Yeah. Um, so how would I do it? Would I type in Piper Warrior? Would I type in a uh, model P number? Probably a PA28151 okay, if you cool. went in the ADs and you can search the So we would find aircraft. all the ADs for the aircraft. Yeah. Would we find every AD for that aircraft or what about like the ADs for the engine? Where would we find those? Would they be in with the PA28151? 
That would, 28, 151? I'm guessing they'd probably be with the Lycoming 0320. Okay, so we have to search the engine the separate engine from the separate. airframe. Yeah, and um, in fact, like, are you familiar? How many, um, kind of a side note, how many Magnetos are on this airplane? Two Magnetos. Two. You know what brand they are? Um, I'm not sure what brand okay. they are. Okay. No. Um, let's call them Bendix. Could you name any brands of Magnetos out there? Uh, Bendix. Bendix, no, okay. That's, that's one <laughs> wow. of them. Yeah. <laughs> Quick learner. It does uh, ring a bell. Yeah. So uh, they any might other? Do. Um, brands that you can think of? Okay, so like, so like Slick is a brand. Yeah. Slick, Bendix, okay. two big brand names right. for Magnetos. So you might not know if it's Bendix or Slicks on the engine. So we might be able to search the engine, but we might have search ADs for the engine and the airframe and the Magnetos themselves and all these different appliances. So how many maintenance logbooks would you have for this airplane or expect to have? You know, like as far as an airframe, airframe, you'd have a power plant okay. and a propeller. Okay, cool. So we could at least have three, those at three, least three, at yeah. least three. Perfect. Uh, very good. Now on this airplane, what's required or where can we look to find out what's required for like day VFR flights? So we're going to go fly today. Uh, day, day VFR Day VFR is going to be in your far end. There okay. is a requirement in there. And um, so, if I said, you know, like attitude indicator, is that required? If we walked up to the for, airplane for day flights. Yeah. Um. Well, I do have something I can check. Okay. This here, which uh, airspeed, it doesn't look like our altimeter. Well, or our um, attitude indicator is not okay. in there for day VFR. So if we walk out to the airplane today and we fire up, and we go to taxi out, and we realize the attitude indicator is, you know, we'll okay, just so, kind of yeah. dead. Um, is it, I mean, can we just go fly? If it's no, definitely not. Uh, first off, you'd want to label that in op. Okay, so, so we might have to taxi uh, back yeah, in. taxi over, over to our uh, maintenance department and go see what's going on because there could be a bigger issue going okay. on with cool the, yeah no i like that engine. that sounds good uh so we would bring it back over maintenance you mentioned they put an in-op sticker on it what other okay. steps um because it's not required here so what other steps would we check or how could we know that's not required um well we 91 205 we could look in the far aim and and check that out okay and see what our requirements are yeah and it's not required by 91 205 where yeah. what other things could require it be operational on the airplane or other um, documents well you want to you want to check your log books and everything so that would that would be an airframe uh, okay logbook. yeah i mean in the maintenance log book for the airframe so you'd have to get that not. signed if you had it sure you know, if it was in op you want to get that signed off yeah it, so we want to make a note that it was an operative in the yeah. airframe log book no that makes mm -hmm. sense to me um that sounds good but what other documents might require uh, that it's actually working. So 91205, we said doesn't. It doesn't. Um, and I agree with that. But Possibly the POH. The POH, yeah, okay. So the manufacturer might require yeah. it in the POH. And are there any other things that could require special equipment on the airplane? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, you might know of We just... Uh, <laughs> seems that way. Yeah, we were just talking about um, these airworthiness directives and how they yeah, issue an airworthiness yeah. directive for a new inspection. Uh, okay. How... Um, yeah, maybe they uh, maybe they issue an airworthiness directive that might require an attitude indicator. Maybe too many guys were just you know flying them into the ocean at night. And they yeah. didn't know which way it was up, so they made an airworthiness directive that they all had to have attitude yeah. indicators. Yeah. Um, so okay, so it's not required by any of those three things: the airworthiness directives, the manufacturer, and the POH or anything like that. And it's not required by ninety one two hundred five, and uh, that sounds good. So not required by any of those three things. Uh, the interesting thing is, I'm, I don't know how your weight and balance is set up. We can take a look at that later, but maybe mm -hmm. in the POH or in the weight and balance, it'll say what's required by the manufacturer. So it's not required. You said we're going to make an in get an in-op sticker. We're going to have a logbook entry in the airframe logbook. Is that going to be made by us or by the mechanic? By the mechanic. By the mechanic. Okay, he is cool. Going to sign that off. And then, do we have to do anything with the attitude indicator? Like, do we have to take it out of the airplane? Do we have to replace it? You don't have to take it out unless they deem it's necessary to okay. take it out, but they probably. Placard it with an in op sticker. Okay, how long can we fly the airplane like that? With the in op sticker? Yeah. Until the ink fades off of it? 
I mean, uh, depends, the sticky on, note depends falls off. on what your AMP mechanic's telling you. You'd probably okay. want to ask him and see So we can confirm with the, yeah, the AMP. See, see. Is there any regulation about how long we can fly around with inoperative equipment? I'm guessing there is, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is a terrific guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if we look at inoperative equipment, something like 91.213 uh, may tell us uh, about inoperative equipment. And you might find in the far aim where it says something along the lines of it can be labeled in up and you can go fly the airplane if it's not required, but it needs to be repaired or replaced at the next inspection, next hundred hour, next annual. Unless the owner deems it's not necessary or unless you just don't the want owner, to basically. The owner deems? Yeah. So even the owner can say, I mean, obviously the A&P may say you have to replace this or I won't sign off your airplane uh, for annual, but the owner could if you read the far aim, say, no, oh, it's really expensive. I don't want to, really, don't yeah. want to fix it. Yeah. Like, what could be an example of a piece of equipment that there's just no sense in fixing? Like, in, think about on the old style panels. Maybe an like old ADF. Mm -hmm. Might be that might be perfect. Something. An old NDB or yeah. ADF. Yeah. yeah, the FA is not going to force you to replace you don't that need, thing. You don't yeah. need one anymore. Yeah, so either remove it from the airplane or fly around with an with an inop sticker. Um, even though those things weigh like ten pounds, you can save ten Take pounds. Out, yeah, by taking it out. Yeah. That sounds good. Cool. Uh, so a little bit about like privileges and limitations. We kind of touched on that, but what can you do with commercial pilot certificates? So if I, if you want to make money, you mentioned private carriage. What are some of the other ways you could make money as a commercial pilot? Like you want to be like, hey, I'm Eli, and for a hundred bucks an hour, I'll fly your airplane anywhere. For you for my own, not actually working for a company. Right? No, working for a company. Like, what could you do? Um, I could go up and give some sightseeing tours, okay. that sort of thing. Can you do that? But with my airplane or with someone else's? Well, either way. So can you do it with your airplane? Um, I don't believe I can. Okay. Um, you could do it with someone else's, you said. I could do it with my airplane if it was one of my friends that was like, hey, you know, let's, let's go up. I'll pay you a little bit for it. So he could jump in and I could... And you had like a private it. carriage contract yeah. with them or something. Yeah, yeah that it's might... It's not even a contract. It's just really word of mouth. Or... Yeah, that, yeah, that's a little bit of a gray area. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily do that. But say you want to do like... So a scenic tour flight. What would that fall under? Are there any regs about scenic tour flights? Mm, not, not that I'm... Sh not that I, not that's okay. coming to mind. Sure. So nothing like uh, maybe 91... Uh, 147. If I were to pull out a number, Let's a lucky here. number. 91, 147. You can look it up. Yeah, passenger carrying flights for compensation or higher. Yeah. Okay, so that might shed a little light on what you're trying to do as a Part 91 operator doing scenic flights. Um, little things like, uh, you know, you need to have a drug testing program and you need to have a approved LOA from a flight standards district office. So, yeah, All right. might be a few extra steps yeah, there before. Yeah, a few things before, before you just have Yeah, you can't take a bunch of cash and, and, yeah, you just jump in and go somewhere. Okay, that sounds better. Yeah. Um, cool. Now, uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Okay, so for today, we're going to go from uh, the Lakeland Airport, and then we'll head on up to uh, Waycross. All right. Um, and maybe from Waycross after that, up to uh, Macon. So if we look at, uh, let's look at the Lakeland Airport. All right. So looking at Lakeland here, uh, what airspace, if you're, uh, if you're about five miles north of the airport standing on the ground, what kind of airspace would you be standing in? You'd be in G. In G airspace, okay. Yeah. So five miles north of the airport would be right about yeah. there. That's, so that's four nautical miles circle. So, yep. Yeah. Okay, so five miles from the airport, we're in G airspace. Yeah. What's if we look straight up? What kind of airspace would we see above us? We we see E above us after twelve hundred. Okay. Uh, because you're outside of it. Okay, so if we were a little closer to the airport. If we were just underneath this magenta line here, what kind of airspace would we? Uh, 
700, you'd be G to 700. Okay, and then what's above 700? And then you'd be an E. Okay, and then what's above that? And then uh, at 18,000, unless there's something else going on. There's no, no B airspace anywhere, so above that you'd be in A airspace. Okay, cool. That sounds good to me. Uh, can you fly into A airspace as a commercial pilot? Um, no. You'd have to have an instrument rating. Okay, you have to have an instrument rating, and then you could go into A airspace. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and it'd have to be an IFR flight plane. Sure. That sounds good. Uh, let's see here. If you were going to be standing near Tampa, or maybe over here near Palm Harbor, See these two little towers right here near mm -hmm. Palm Harbor, yeah. 377 feet. Yep. So what what airspace are you in when you're standing on the ground next to those towers? Right here? Yep. 3,000 right there. I believe you've been G airspace on okay. the ground. Okay, that sounds good. What if you were at uh, 1,500 feet? Say the tower was 1,500 feet tall and you climbed up it. Uh, you'd be in E airspace. Okay. What kind of airspace would you hit above the E? Above the E, you'd hit B. At what altitude? 3,000. Okay. And then what would be the next airspace? Next airspace would be E again. Okay. At what altitude? Uh, that would be 10,000. Okay. Yep. If you're going to fly over, um, over that area at 12,500 feet... Uh, would you need a transponder? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and what about mm -hmm. if you're over here at 12,500 feet? A mode C transponder is required above 10,000. Okay. Uh, let's see. What if, uh, what, would you need oxygen if you're at 12,500 feet cruising around there? After 30 minutes, you'd need oxygen. Okay. Gotcha. And uh, how high can we go uh, on that 30 minute window? Uh, 30 minute window 12 5 to 14 after okay. 30 minutes the immediate crew needs oxygen okay how about the passengers uh, passengers don't need oxygen so this little guy doesn't need oxygen 12, so 5, cute. 12 kind of... 5 to 14 the immediate crew needs oxygen okay. after 30 minutes okay but, when would this little guy need oxygen uh, above 15 everyone on board needs oxygen and then I might take it away at that point. <laughs> yeah. It looked like that. Yeah, if you don't give him oxygen, he gets angry. Yeah. 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 I'd probably um, slap it on me yeah. a little earlier. So, yeah, give him some oxygen. I'd probably give him 15. oxygen at 12, 5, but that's, that's just mine. 15, he needs oxygen. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, let's see here. So, let's say the transponder on this airplane is not working. We went through all those steps of inoperative equipment. So, we go ahead and uh, we're flying along around here at 5,000 feet. Mm -hmm. Need a transponder for that or? Okay, so the rest of this oral exam is online at flightmikealpha.com. Like I said earlier, the link is in the description below. If you have any questions on this video or any questions about how to sign up at flightmikealpha.com for the commercial pilot bootcamp, what it all includes and how it's going to help you pass your check ride, go ahead and leave your questions in the comments below. We'd be happy to answer them for you. Remember, there are a lot of other awesome, helpful courses online at flightmikehealth.com, private pilot, instrument pilot, commercial pilot, ground schools, check ride prep for private pilot, instrument, and commercial pilots, plus a lot of other awesome courses on there. And when you take our courses, you are guaranteed to pass your check ride. Go ahead and click the link below to see all the awesome benefits that come along with the membership at flightmikehealth.com. Like I said, any questions, leave them in the comments below. And remember, if you can't fly every day, then flightmikehealth.com. We will see y'all next time.